Hi folks and welcome back to the channel. It's the end of January and we're on a six day canoe camping expedition here up in the highlands of Scotland on Loch Awe. Uh, we paddled over from the eastern shore of the loch over to this small island yesterday. The island's called Inner Shale, I believe, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, it, was a, it was pretty windy yesterday but last night and today uh, high winds were forecast so we've built a little base camp which I'll show you in a moment. I've just checked the weather report so over the next four days the wind seemed to drop significantly so does the temperature and some snows forecast so let's see how it goes hopefully we'll have a we'll have a good time out on the lock So it's about half three now and we've just put the fire on in the lavu. We've got the front air stove in there so we've uh, we're just going to knock up a bit of sweet and sour pork and rice. We've just been busy uh, sorting things out around camp and tidying up a bit and chopping some wood. So yeah it's been a pretty busy day. Um, didn't get much sleep last night either because of the winds so I reckon probably get a bit of an early night get up early and see what the situation's like on the lock see if we can get the boat out maybe pack up and head up to a few more islands up there there's a Kilchurn castle up there as well and a few other islands that we might explore but um it's a brilliant little place to come and stay this I mean I know it's winter and you've got to be prepared for the for the cold but if you've got a canoe and you can bring some wood and a stove and a canvas tent then you know you're not going to have any problems you just need to keep an eye on on what the weather's doing We've just woken up in the morning here. This is day three of the uh, canoe expedition. The wind pretty much disappeared last night, um, so we managed to get a good night's sleep. It's a little bit of frost on the ground this morning, but um, yeah, we I got up early and put the, the front air stove on. There was a little bit of condensation inside the tent, which I think you're going to expect because it's a single skin tent. I've just had a a little billy can of coffee on the stove for, a, for about 10 minutes just to boil that. This stove has a, a, a damping adjustment there so once you boil your coffee you can just turn that down and just get a bit of a slow burn going. Warm the tent up. Fantastic view outside.
So we've just packed everything up, um, well, just for the canoe. We've decided to camp here for another night. It's such a great spot, we, we thought, well, it'd be a shame to leave it. The winds, the winds disappeared, as you can see, the lake's looking really, really smooth. So we've put our lunch in the canoe, some bits and bobs, just gonna leave the tent and everything else just, just packed up there. And then we're gonna go and explore these islands. These islands, uh, like you can see over there, are called the Black Isles. And uh, you can recognize the trees on them, they're part of the old Caledonian forest. I mean, much of that old ancient forest has been cleared from Scotland. But on these islands, uh, some of the forest still remains. And I think uh, those pines and the trees on there are classic examples of the ancient forest. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I'm just happy. It's freezing cold. There's some snow forecast, but it's perfect without the wind. It's really, really picturesque. So let's get this canoe on the water. So on this little island, there seems to be the ruins of an old castle, which was uh, first mentioned in 1267 or something. So it's like a 13th century castle. Apparently it was abandoned in the 15th century and then re-inhabited as a dwelling in the 1700s. And then by 1769, it was, uh, it was abandoned. And it's been abandoned ever since. So we've just paddled back down to Inner Shale, which is the island that we're camping on, that we've been camping on for the last few days. And we've um, just come, come in from the other side to see if we can find the burial ground, because we can't get across the island from wh where we are. It's just waterlogged and it doesn't seem to be a defined path, but I think we're in luck here.
So I'm just out here paddling the canoe on my own. This canoe is a, an old town camper, 16. So it's 16 foot long. And it's made out of a plastic called Royal X, which uh, unfortunately you can't buy anymore. There's only one factory in the world that produced it. It closed down in 2016. But it's uh, a very tough, lightweight plastic. This boat only weighs 25 kilograms, so it's exceptionally light. It's just a shame they don't make them anymore, never mind. But uh, the canoe itself, it's a fantastic tool for getting out and wild camping. Sometimes I think it's a bit difficult to, to really find a little bit of peace and quiet in the UK. I mean, especially if you travel in a, a four-wheel drive. It's not like it is on the continent where you can get up into, into the mountains on dirt tracks and get some peace and quiet. But um, the canoe allows you to do that here in, in the UK. I mean, Scotland has an abundance of uh, options for getting out and about and doing this sort of stuff. And the great thing is um, you're not likely to meet anybody else while you're out here. Especially at this time of year. But I'm going to head back to camp now. I've had some lunch. And I'm going to get a coffee on. And then I'm going to build a little bit of a setup where I'm uh, going to get the Dutch oven out. And do a beef and dumpling stew for tonight over a, an open fire, I think. Because that needs a couple of hours to cook and it'll just get way too hot in the, in the lavu tent with that frontier stove burning. It's really, really toasty in there. I mean, it's such a small tent. I got up this morning and I just put maybe, you know, four or five bits of decent sized kindling in and within within about 15 minutes my coffee was boiling and the tent was uh, was red hot. I had to open the door, let some heat out. So we didn't bring any water with us on this trip. Instead, I brought along a little Sawyer filtration kit. It's basically just a, a little filter here. And you gather your water in this little bag. That screws on the top. So you just put the filter on the top and then you just squeeze it and you get filtered water. So we've just been collecting water from the lock and doing that and then boiling it just to be on the safe side, although there's probably no need. I think this kills something like 99.9% .9 of all bacteria, but I think it struggles with viruses, so a five minute boil will help with that as well. But yeah, it's been useful so far. Just gonna get a coffee on now with the ghillie kettle.
So we spent the last hour building a little uh, fire pit down here. Um, gonna get the Dutch oven out, get a stew on. It's a bit of a, a breeze coming down from the north, so just built a nice little shelter for the fire there. <laughs> That'll do the job, and then we'll just hang the Dutch oven from here and get a beef and dumpling stew on the go for a couple of hours. So we set off uh, from the island this morning in relatively calm weather. We were heading into a snowstorm, but the water was flat and the wind was pretty low, it was barely blowing. But once we got a bit further north up the lake, the, uh, the wind really started to blow from a, like a southwesterly wind, I think it was. It was coming up behind us, which wasn't too much of a problem, but we actually had to kind of come across again so we were side on uh, onto a uh, big waves for a period. I mean, they weren't crashing over the top of the boat, but they had white caps on them, and it was a bit, uh, a bit exciting. Let's say. So yeah, we just tried to find somewhere to camp up quickly. So we've come to this little outcrop up the northern end. Uh, I've set my tarp up there to keep all the gear under. The canoe's a bit further down there on the edge of the lock. Well, this should do for a couple of nights. 
and then we'll head back towards the boatyard I think we're starting to run out of food but uh, we've got the lavo set up and we've got the, the wood burner on straight away to get some food on the go we've noticed over the last few days we've actually been too busy to, to eat much particularly uh, during the day so gonna get some bacon and eggs on Tris is in there now cracking on <laughs> Scramble them eggs, Tris. <laughs> Scrambled eggs and beans. Just sitting out a bit of a squall here underneath the top. Uh, a bit of a weather front coming from down the lock there. Bringing some uh, wintry showers with it. This is due to continue all night and into tomorrow as well. We've just switched our phones on to check the weather and it's gonna get out to minus four this evening. Well, by six o'clock it says, which is pretty believable. Judging by the conditions so far, it's going to be a very, very cold day tomorrow, then the winds change. Uh, it'll be coming northeasterly, so it'll be even colder. And I think that's when we're going to draw a line under this expedition and head back to the boatyard. So, another couple of nights, and then uh, I think we'll have achieved what we set out to. But it's uh, I'm not going to lie, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit rough, it's a bit of a challenge. It's probably the most challenging thing I've actually done so far. It's uh, trying to live out of a canoe and out of a communist era lavo tent. Uh, yeah, it's fun though. Glad we glad we set out. Well, folks, here's a little look of life in the Lavu. It's about, what time is it, Tris? Must be about six or something. It's about six o'clock and we've uh, been busy working all afternoon. Not really sure what we've been doing, like, or I'm knackered. <laughs> Tris is... Uh... <laughs> Tris is um, just preparing some some um food here on one of the uh, fire hazards we have in the tent we have another one here which is an open candle so if that catch if the tent catches fire from that uh you know you know who's to blame yeah. Trace. <laughs> so what we're going to do here then we've we've got the uh the front air stove set i'll just give you a quick look at that actually if you can see at the front these things come with very long legs so i got a bit of um an old bit of what was it a roof bar and I cut it up and put a little drilled a hole in and put a little tent peg through and I've done the same at the back there as well just so we can have it raised up off the ground but without the legs out um yeah so this is where we're keeping the things we've got this this box here which is the kitchen box that has everything in it and um yeah just bits and bobs and crap lying around here 
you can get quite a bit in the way we have it set up we've got like a like a double bed almost there and just small crap shoved around the side and um we've been using these zebra cans they're all right like but they seem to stick a bit on the bottom i mean i think tonight's gonna be no exception <laughs> I'm going to try and uh, boil a curry in the bloody thing. So I'll probably spend at least three hours tomorrow morning with a scourer trying to clean the uh, bottom of it. But uh, we've been using this one, which is, uh, I think it's a, a 10 centimetre one for a coffee pot. Um, this is a 16 centimetre one. I've seen people on YouTube actually roast things in here. They turn them on the side and uh, you can use it as a little oven and that one I think is a 12 centimeter one so they are quite handy and they come with these little these little um, bits in the middle like that like a little tray on top which we warmed our beans up in one of those this morning you can fry an egg in it and stuff like that I'm not entirely sure whether or not these are meant to be used as cooking utensils I think they're made in Thailand for like kind of just like food storage like tiffin boxes but uh, everyone seems to use them for cooking in, so yeah, it well, looks quite nice. We're just going to make a chicken korma with uh, the seeds of change. <laughs> yeah, so that'll be a nice easy job. I've got a nice box of wine there. So yeah, that's it. Uh, life in the lavo. What are you going to say for yourself, Tris? <laughs> Can you recommend it? Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, morning folks, uh, it's another lovely day here on Loch Awe. Yeah, so in terms of uh, water filtration, I'm just getting a big bucket full of water from the lock and then pouring water from the bucket into this uh, Sawyer squeeze system. If you come across a running uh, stream or what have you, I guess you can put this plastic container underneath to gather water, but it's virtually impossible to fill it up from the edge of the lock. You would have to really fully submerge it. Um, and I'm not going to put my wellies on just to walk out for a bit. So this is how I'm using it. Fill it up from the bucket and then just squeezing straight out into the kettle or wherever.
Well, it's the middle of the afternoon now and I've got the tarp all set up and I've built a little fire pit. So what we're going to do is uh, find a bit of wood to build a pot stand. I need a couple of straight bits. But um, to be honest, there's not a lot of wood around this area. The, the, the last place we were camped out had a, had a fair amount, but this seems to be another popular site. And you can tell that because of the mess. Um, you, as, as we came around the lake, there actually isn't that many places to pitch a tent. Uh, that shore was just totally waterlogged, it was no good at all. So you come round to this bit here where there's a good flat drained area, there's a bit of high ground, so it, it isn't boggy at all. So it attracts other campers, um, the 5% of uh, careless campers who just leave everything. I mean, I'm, over there there's a, a rusty tent frame, there's a fire pit there full of um, bottles of beer. There's a bottle of beer just behind me. Um, there's a full top top hall and left up there and then there's just litter everywhere but uh yeah it's a shame never mind um but i've noticed that a lot of the firewood seems to have disappeared as well i think anything that's that's reasonably dry reasonably well seasoned has been used so um i'm just happy that we brought a lot with us which we've actually now pretty much run out of we've got enough to keep us warm tonight in the lavo tent and enough to, to kick start the frontier stove in the morning as well and get a coffee on before we pack up but it's uh yeah so far it's been fantastic but wow what hard work everything uh takes effort sometimes i wish i just brought a little gas uh, burner with me so i could just get a cup of coffee on in the morning easily instead of having to wait 30 40 minutes for the wood burner to warm up to to boil a, a coffee but it's uh I think it teaches you a few lessons, you know, of uh, patience and endeavour. <laughs> There's nothing, when you're living out in a forest, nothing comes easy. Everything has to be worked for, your meals, your warmth. But uh, I guess it's a part of life which, you know, we just don't experience anymore. And it's good, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm getting on a bit these days. My back's getting a bit sore. My uh, arms aren't as strong as they used to be and my knee's a bit weak. <laughs> But um, you're going to certainly fail it out here, especially with the cold. But it's uh, such a fantastic environment. All around you, you've got uh, snow-capped hills and mountains and, and forests covered in snow. It's a really, it's a really kind of beautiful place to be. The lake's uh, flattened out a bit now. I don't know what the conditions are going to be like in the morning. The, uh, the weather front changes. There's one coming in from the the northeast, which is in that direction. And we've had them coming up uh, southwest, which is that direction, since we've actually been on this lake. So I'm not really sure what conditions that'll um, create on the on the lock. We are heading downwards of a of a northerly wind, so hopefully it'll be behind us because we've got about five or six miles to paddle in the morning. So we'll see how it goes. Anyway, I'm going to crack on and see if I can find myself a bit of wood for a pot hanger.
think that's it for this journey. The boatyard's about 300 metres away. We've come through a bit of choppy stuff, but the wind was behind us. So we've got back safely. And uh, yeah, what a fantastic trip. Thanks for watching and I'll uh, see you in the next video.